Hi, so this is how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim, and thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So Clinton Hillary actually came out to say this. I really do not know who set her up, but she really felt woefully, you know? She actually came out to say that a lot of young people do not know very much about all about uh, the history of the Middle East, and, uh, and also people really do not know a whole lot about history. And I would ask, the one people do not know a whole lot about is he Americans' involvement in so many things going on all over the world. And she went further to say that uh, TikTok propaganda about Middle East, that she's trying to tell us that propaganda is not education. And I am asking, where is the propaganda coming from? Is he we, I mean, people, not even we, is he people realizing or knowing that their lies, I mean, the lies they have been feeding to people and all that ain't working anymore because people saw this time around by themselves, you know, all this while. It's been them using media, PR, and all that, trying to tarnish other people, right? But this time around, we all saw it live and direct and who the real people are. And see, let me tell you this. A lot, a lot of respect for Clinton after the period she collected a lot of, she collected check from APAC because since she collected that check, you all know how they do once they collect check from APAC. Let's get. Propaganda is not education. Propaganda on whether it's TikTok or in the classroom uh, is actually the opposite of education. Anybody who is teaching uh, in a university or anyone who is uh, putting content on social media should be held responsible for what they include and what they exclude. And so much of what we're seeing, particularly on TikTok, about what's going on in the Middle East is woefully false, but it's also incredibly slanted, pro-Hamas, anti-Israel. And it is, you know, not uh, any place where anyone should go to get information about complex matters like what uh, is going on there. You know, people are on social media oftentimes to press an agenda, an ideological, a religious, a financial, a political, a partisan agenda. And so, of course, you don't get uh, the facts. Of course, you don't get uh, any kind of context. And we have to do a better job ourselves, and we certainly have to do a better job with young people in trying to help them understand how to filter and interpret the information they're giving. And I think we also need to do a better job in our classrooms, particularly at the college and university level, not to fall into, you know, easy absolutes. You're either this or you're that. You're for, you're against. Life is too complicated. History yeah. certainly is. Propaganda is not education. Propaganda on whether it's tick. Who gets to define what's propaganda and what's not? And it's crazy because TikTok really does suppress a lot of the content about Palestine, Congo, Sudan, which is why a lot of people aren't even saying like the names of these places. They got acronyms. They got all kind of stuff they got to move around so they could get their content shared because the algorithm's working against them. So it's like you really going to sit up here and say that first person accounts of propaganda but what you're saying is the truth, huh? Yeah? Okay. Propaganda is not education. No, Hillary, you're wrong. Propaganda is education for stupid people. Absolutely. They're learning stuff from propaganda all the time. I mean, look at Trump supporters. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, let's really get into this. Dr. Larry Smith, historian, his professor, entrepreneur, pan-Africanist, pro-black, queer boy, and so much more. If you want to know more about me, check out my page. And if you like what you see, follow me so that you get more of what you see in your FYP. All right, so y'all, I was having me a mojito and I was watching TV and, and I had an edible. Yeah, I'll say that. A gummy. And I'm just chilling, relaxing, minding my business. You know, enjoying my weekend when we finally have gotten some warm weather here in the Seattle area. And Hillary Clinton pops up on my timeline on MSNBC talking about TikTok information. Now here's the thing. I'm not gonna jump on here and be pro TikTok. TikTok, I should be at a million people, but you know why I'm not? Because I have a black agenda, because I dispense and talk about black history, and because I talk about issues that face the black community, 
TikTok does not allow me to go into the algorithm like it allows stupid people to go into the algorithm. Like for example, that crazy Asian guy who wore blackface this week. Or that other guy with the nails who I want to say a, a fashion designer, a famous one, has noticed. Or so many people cosplaying black. They want all our rhythm but none of our blues. And then they try to tell us that when we talk about our blues, we don't know what we're talking about. As if we're not competent mentally enough to understand our experiences. Nevertheless, Hillary, so you're absolutely right. For actual understanding of knowledge, for actual credible information, for, for, for in order to understand facts, F-A-C-T-S, you can't just rely on propaganda, right? Propaganda might catch your attention, but you damn sure better go and do some real hard, thorough research to really make sure that the propaganda that you see is either telling what the truth is or dispelling it to, say, to get the truth if you're seeking truth. So you're absolutely right. And I have noticed on this app quite a bit of propaganda. I mean, from black people calling themselves natives to white people saying black people can be and other people of color can be racist to men and women going back and forth, not understanding each other or listening to each other to homophobia and them being a queer. I mean, I've heard a lot of propaganda and misinformation, even as it relates to politics, whether it's what's going overseas, whether it's, you know, what's here happening, actual policy, what government is doing what Trump is, all kinds of stuff. So yes, propaganda is all up on this app. And y'all would be lying if y'all said she was telling a lie. Because at the end of the day, we know, especially black content creators who promote conscious stuff to help our community, to educate our community and those who want to know about our community and, and who feel empathy and want our community to progress, who are allies, we know that they promote that stuff, the propaganda, but the actual factual stuff is hard to promote. You have to work extra hard. Like like some of the conscious creators that I know, like the Conscious Lee and a couple of others, uh, JJ, who have managed to get over a certain amount, they either came here with all those followers who just brought them over, or they've been working hard, 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 hard to, uh, like Savage Lowkey, uh, hard being at a foe, He's had to go up and down with, that, with his conscious stuff, but has to work hard, 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 just to build, build, build a, a rapport. <laughs> but if you like me, post one or two, three times, maybe a day, you will just get caught up in the wind. And TikTok is going to suppress you. So like I said, I'm not I'm going to jump on the board and say, oh, we need to keep TikTok. If this shit goes away, this shit goes away, in my humblest opinion, because I've said it before and I'll say it again. My activism isn't on this app. Some of y'all have became activists just this year or just on this app. I've been doing this since 2002. I've been an educator for a long time too. So this is just a medium I use to reach my young people, to reach my black people, to reach my conscious people, my woke people, whatever. <laughs> so yes, so I agree. <laughs> it is misinformation. And misinformation, yes, can be educational, but only to those willing to do the work to verify the information. If you are just a random stupid person who really just receive information but you don't really process information, then propaganda and misinformation is your reliable source of information. And you can tell those of us on this app who rely on propaganda. <laughs> I mean, pretty much everybody on the Trump team rely on some type of propaganda for their information. Because anytime you talk to them, it's always the propaganda speaking points. Blah, 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 blah. Nevertheless, so she's right on the, some of the things she's saying. However, Mrs. Clinton, <laughs> former Secretary of State, former First Lady, <laughs> Mrs. Hillary Rodman Clinton, free speech is a right. Whether it is propaganda, because the United States is the biggest propaganda engine on the planet and has always been. Hollywood is propaganda. So let's not act like propaganda isn't the American way. I mean, the minstrel show, blackface, telling people what black people were through media has been propagandized. 
So we're not going to act like the United States isn't the leading nation of propaganda, period, across the world. And have the access and the power and the money to put as much stuff out there as we want to. And we influence through this. And so you mentioned educators. You're absolutely right. Educators should not be promoting propaganda, even if they're posting stuff online. That's why I take very keen interest and very careful awareness and making sure that when I do post something, my facts are in line. And a lot of people don't always do that. And I, I, I call out to my fellow educator content creators or my professional content creators or content creators who are experts in their fields. Make sure you're putting the right shit out though. Because some of y'all I had looking crazy. But anyway, so you're right, you're right. All everything you're saying is right. But once again, freedom of speech does not have to be what feels good to the government. And while I'm not going to jump on the safe TikTok bandwagon, because like I said, what happens, happens. I don't give a damn or a fuck or a fuck to damn. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. But you cannot inhibit free speech. And you also can't deny that there's a lot of socially active people now. A lot of politically active people because of this app. This is why I know you and Joe and Trump and all y'all in the Congress. Well, a lot of y'all, not all y'all. Because my girl Jasmine, Jamal, AOC, uh, you know, uh, Iman. Some of these, they, they, they ride, but they young, fresh, still trying to build their voices with making huge impact. And hopefully they stick with it so they can change the future. But majority of y'all old, majority of y'all white. Y'all are out of touch with the majority of what's going on in the country, whether it's with racial situations, whether it's with economic situations, y'all, and it doesn't matter what your political party is, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, y'all are old white people, boomers, as y'all have been called. And while we respect y'all elderships, and because and I don't believe you should disrespect old people because I believe that takes time off of your life. So if you if you ignorant to the elders, then don't expect to grow to be an elder. You know, but <laughs> y'all are elders. Y'all are boomers. Y'all are too old to understand what's going on out in the real world. And y'all are white people, old white people, of all people. If anybody's in the bubble more than an elder white person, I don't know who else is. Male or female, Democrat or Republican, does not matter. So you're missing the point, Senator Clinton. And that point is this. The people are speaking. Some people are listening. And as they're speaking and listening, people are rising up and they're telling you, y'all are no longer going to tell us what we need. We're telling y'all what we need. And y'all either start listening Oh, some shit about to hit the fan. But with me, my content, my mission, my life, the way I vote, is going to always be a black motherfucking agenda. And I'm out. Propaganda is not education. Um, you had slaves. Unpaid servants from prisons? Bruh! Uh, goodbye. As you guys watch Hillary Clinton talk about TikTok as if it's the biggest propaganda machine in the world, and the fact that TikTok is spreading misinformation because it's giving people the advantage to do stuff, to know about countries and cultures as well as the government's role and everything else, let me give you a quick recap that back in 2010, there was an earthquake in Haiti that took so many people, destroyed infrastructures, stopped schools, stopped businesses, and the earthquake was so bad and we lost so many people that America was like, wow, it's time for me to act like a regular, caring, neighboring country. Everyone was talking about, oh, my goodness the kids are so hungry they're eating mud cookies there's no food in haiti and so the clintons took it upon themselves to start the clinton foundation and this foundation was supposed to be a donation right an organization to donate to haiti to help us thrive again now don't get me wrong the foundation made a lot of money and they promised a whole lot more to haiti but we can try to play a game together and figure out where the money went. Because after starting construction of one hospital in Haiti, it seems like the money disappeared. Nobody knew if the money went right or left. 
People think that the money didn't touch Haiti. Others think that the money went to the oligarchs. So just saying, I would never take advice or information from a bitch who regularly scams the poor. Where's the money? Propaganda is not education. Propaganda is standing up for the Pledge of Allegiance in a classroom when you don't even really know what America is. Propaganda is having holiday based around genocide and saying they came together and had dinner. Propaganda is learning in school that slavery ended over a hundred years ago. It's currently being used in prison systems. Propaganda is learning that America stopped doing genocide after Andrew Jackson. Propaganda is learning that annexation means both countries agree. I'm talking about Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Guam. Propaganda is learning that we are the freest country in the world, despite having the largest prison population in the world. Propaganda is learning that America entered World War II to beat the Nazis. Propaganda is learning that the Civil War was about economics. What are you even talking about, Hillary? Propaganda is always through education. Propaganda is not education. Propaganda, on whether it's TikTok or in the classroom, uh, is actually the opposite of education. Anybody who is teaching uh, in a university or anyone who is uh, putting content on social media should be held responsible for what they include and what they exclude. And so much of what we're seeing, particularly on TikTok, about what's going on in the Middle East is woefully false, but it's also incredibly slanted, pro-Hamas, anti-Israel. And it is, you know, not uh, any place where anyone should go to get information about complex matters like what uh, is going on there. Somebody please answer this question. Why they keep sending out this lady? <laughs> Why they keep sending this lady out to talk? Every time, every time she gets on the mic, she gets roasted. People are tired of seeing her face. Now you're saying <laughs> that it's too complex to understand what's going on in the Middle East. Yet you understand it just fine. Joe understands it just fine. But everybody else in the world cannot understand what's going on in the Middle East. It's called colonization. That's what it's called. It's called land theft. That's what it's called. This is insane. The question is, I wanna know why they keep sending her out. Anybody know where the Obamas are? <laughs> where they at? I notice I haven't seen any interviews or late night shows with Obama. I wonder if there's a reason why. I think they need to stop sending Hillary out. She's making it worse. Y'all should see the comment section of that video. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I really wish she would stop coming on these new shows and actually deal with the fact that her and her raggedy family owes Haiti. How about you pay back Haiti? You know, your raggedy brother that had a mining business in Haiti and took all that gold? How about you do that shit? Instead of coming on here trying to tell us that TikTok has propaganda while you spew propaganda. That's fucking weird. It is not complex. It is colonization. It is a land grab. It is a G-side. Period. But anyway, has anybody seen Obama's? Where they at? And so much of what we're seeing, particularly on TikTok, about what's going on in the Middle East is woefully false, but it's also incredibly slanted, pro-Hamas, anti-Israel. And it is, you know, not uh, any place where anyone should go to get information about complex matters like what uh, is going on there. Huh. Where should they go then, Hill? Who should they listen to, if not the primary sources that are live video footage of children blown to bits, mothers wailing in agony trapped under rubble? Should they listen to politicians who routinely lie to them and write laws that favor themselves and their corporate and lobbying donors? Who investigate themselves when accused of crimes against the American public only to surprisingly state they've discovered that they've done nothing wrong? Should they listen to mainstream media who, not to go all tinfoil hat on you, is 
bought and paid for, used by the rich and powerful to sway the public into believing a chosen narrative? Should they listen to Hillary the Hawk, whose rap sheet in the Middle East is far from favoring peace or, at the very least, the interests of American citizens? The woman who said, and I quote, that Americans should get over themselves if they're not happy with the candidate options for presidency. The woman who left American citizens to die in the Middle East. Now it would be dishonest to pretend that social media can't muddy the information that people are getting because there are so many people posting videos, people with biases, people who are ill-intentioned, people who are well-intentioned but confused themselves. But this isn't 2001 anymore. This isn't 2012 anymore, where we'd have to wait for a sterilized press release from our oligarchs to have any insight on what's happening around the world, our involvement in it, and take it at face value. It is all at our fingertips. And though possibly muddy in the beginning, it all comes to light eventually. Now, if I were you and wanted to win people over in some way, and I know you're one to double down on whatever behavior contributed to your past losses instead of seeking to improve it, hence why your communication style with the American public hasn't changed since you lost to Trump, even though it should have, I'd pick a different strategy than whatever that was. the Middle East, or frankly about history. Pokemon, go fuck yourself. Ah, oh, these young people at college, you couldn't even win the fucking electoral college. Hey, Hillary, remember when you lost Michigan? Why don't you tell people how to win elections when you lost Michigan? Young people don't know the context. No, they know a different context than the one you personally learned from fucking Henry Kissinger, Hillary. Oh, you don't think they know about history? Why don't you tell them who voted for No Child Left Behind and defunded fucking history classes all across this fucking nation through public schools? Here's some added context for you, Hillary. You know these university and college protesters you like to talk down on so much? Guess how old they were on the worst night of your life in 2016. I want you to guess how old were they the night that you lost the presidency to a fucking WWE Hall of Famer? How old were they? Yeah, they were between 10 and 14 years old. Now they're between 18 and 22. Or as BBL Billy and Drake like to say, too old. People in their 20s are part of the most international generation of people to ever fucking exist in the history of humankind. They have seen more of the world without ever buying a plane ticket or a passport. And not just the world that you grew up seeing, Hillary. Not just the one that was curated through directors and producers and movie studios and television channels. No, they have gone through a series of feeds across every single app that they have that has slowly fed them the same truth that we've all come to. Which is no matter where we live on this earth, we're a fucking human being with basic needs, rights, and dignity. And what are they seeing right now as they scroll through their feeds? They're seeing people have their rights, dignity, and lives taken away from them. I don't ever want to hear from you again. I'm done with you. Go be a grandma. You have grandkids. Bake fucking cookies or some shit. I need somebody to come get Hillary Clinton. Yeah, I need somebody to come get her. She was having a conversation on Morning Joe. And what she was talking about, college students basically not understanding why they're protesting. <laughs> Roll the clip. Uh, I have had many conversations, as you have had, uh, with a lot of young people over uh, the last many months now. And you're right. They don't know uh, very much at all about the history of the Middle East or, frankly, about history um, in many areas uh, of the world, including in our own country. But with respect to the Middle East. Uh... So what we need is we need for Hillary Clinton and everybody who thinks like her to grab all the seats you can and take them to the edge of the known universe and sit down and shut up. Every time I see the intellectual dishonesty of someone like Hillary Clinton taken to a platform to talk down to college students by telling them they don't understand the history of the Middle East, it tells me two things. One, that they truly don't understand what college students are protesting for, like the divestments of their particular universities in Israel. And two, it, you don't have to understand the history of something to understand that genocide is wrong. And it makes me wonder how white liberals like Hillary Clinton can say the things they're saying about present-day college protests 
when they say they participated in the civil rights protests that happened on campuses throughout the 60s and 70s. You do understand that you didn't have to understand the whole history of racism and segregation in this country to understand. So this is all I got from this. Um, the audacity is just something that really, I mean, the reality or the truth is that they are really telling on themselves, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it was about stealing data. So stealing people's data is still right, right? But uh, the whole thing is that, there, I mean, if you can even look into her eyes, she looks like she knows she's lying. And that is uh, the reality. And she knew that she is lying, you know. And the fact that they come to us and try to tell, I don't know how they feel like people are dumb. Really, how they come out to lie is really amazing because I don't know how I'm going to face the crowd or face them to say, oh, because like, Literally, they know they are lying, but the, the audacity of them lying and at the same time being very bold is something that really needs to be studied. Like, you know, they are aware that people are people are aware of what is going on or what has been going on all over the world. They are, even the, the propaganda they have also pushed and also the real ones because we all know what is going on. And the fact that they said that, uh, you know, before we really had to wait for information from the news or probably from the paper to get in, like to get. But right now we have TikTok and but TikTok is really like topping it. That's why, I mean, we were or we are able to see most of the things happening. So with everything circulating online and their involvement, like American involvement in what is going on. It's something this woman came out here to deny and tell us that, uh, you know, that propaganda is not education. So where is the proper at this point in time? I want to know where the propaganda is coming, if it's coming from we or it is coming from you people. I need to know the ones pushing the propaganda, because as it stands, what we know is that the reality has been uh, like you know, shown to us. We all know the truth. And I love the fact that everybody actually came all out for her because she, I mean, they all knew that she is lying. And the fact that this Clinton, her ancestors had slaves that they never paid, right? It is just the, their audacity. I am so happy that, uh, the, I mean, like people are taking so much power into their hands, getting to learn some certain things, getting to know some certain things without them being the ones disposing the information and all that to us. Can you imagine innocent kids, what is going on in Congo, what is going on in Sudan, what is going on in Palestine? Innocent kids are being affected and they are, I mean, they are being murdered and dead and, Israel, and including their Israeli government and all that. And she is here trying to tell us, I mean, using people's tax money to fund so many things. And she is here trying to tell us like, you know, it could not like you know pro education is not propaganda it's not this and all that i don't know who is actually setting some people up for drag because this particular one they really did set her up and that is it and uh people refuse to acknowledge or address uh some of them but the world already knew they have refused to acknowledge that what they are doing is very horrifying i don't know how these people really set this out but Sometimes I feel like I don't even know where the judgment is going to stop from if there is something like government, like judgment or probably on the final day or something. Because some people's, I mean, judgment will really be a very hard one if there is something like that. I am just saying, I mean, why I am saying this is like, like an adult knowing that something is wrong or what she's doing is wrong and like they are insisting that what is wrong is right. That is just where the problem is. So yeah, it is what it is, but ma'am, I really feel so bad for them because as it stands, I I know that uh, the innocent ones are, because most times when they make a uh, judgment or sorry, when they pass some certain bills or when they do some, or say some certain thing that might be innocent people somewhere, somewhere suffering, suffering, the, the outcome of the judgment or uh, the sovereign that they, or decision that they make. Let me know. I don't know, but 
I think she really lost her. I lost all respect. I don't know if I really do have a lot of respect, but she lost all credibility, credibility like, you know, as soon as she took a check from APAC because Clinton actually took check from APAC. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.